Hello there. So in today's video we'll be talking about uh, generics, which is a long awaited topic considering that we've actually used it several times. So to start off we'll be talking about enums with generics, then structs with generics, and functions and methods with generics. So let's get started. Okay, so the name generics is pretty self-explanatory of what it means. It means that we want to make our code generic. We want to make our code general to any types of um, types that we might want to use. For example, with the um, option enum that we've seen before and the result enum that we've seen before, we want to constrain these to strings or i32s or f64s. We want it to be generic. Um, now we've used this before, so this is sort of review, but if you wanted to use a variant of this generic enum, you can just say sum and then well, just use a normal type as you would. This works with an i32, uh, just the same that it works with an f64. Okay. Um, if we were to return this out of a function, you could say option um, and then whatever type you would have, so an i32, say. Now in result, uh, we've seen this in the error handling video, but yeah, if you were to return it out of a function, you can say result, and then whatever you have, say an i32, um, and then say an io error. Similarly, we returned also in that video an okay. So you, you'd return it just the same. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, enums. Um, pay attention to the syntax we used um, this sort of syntax to denote it. You can have multiple generics and let's get into structs. The syntax for structs with generics isn't all that different from enums. All you do is you want to create a struct for a point. We say struct point your generic and let's say you have an x um, t and a y t. Okay, so this is your point generic. Um, just one thing that I want to note is that here we're only establishing one generic. So X and Y, even though they are generic, they must have the same type. If you wanted them to have different types, what you could do is, uh, let's comment this out, you could then just really just say one more generic. So Y would be of type U. And they could still be of the same types, T and U could be equal, but this way they can be of different types as well. Then, as usual, if you were to create a point, you can just say point P, and then say point X1, Y1. So in here, they're both um, I32s. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's generics, or structs with generics. I think that functions give us a great display of why generics are necessary. Um, for example, say you have these two functions, uh, largest i32, in which you receive a list of a slice of i32s. Um, you create um, a value called largest, which is the first value in the list. Then you iterate through the list, and if you find a value that's largest, draw the list, you, you change the value of largest. So, well, you're finding the maximum value in a list, and then you return it. So, you return an i32. Um, this value only applies to i32s because that's what we have in the function signature. So if we wanted to do the same with chars, we'd have to repeat um, the same function, which is, it looks the exact same, the body is the exact same, but with a different signature. So one way that we can make this better is with generics, and we can just say function largest. Um, now, one important piece of syntax is that we have to define that we'll be using a t in here. So we say t, and then we just say normal code. So this will be of type t, a list of uh, strings, bleh, a slice of t. Uh, we'll return a t, and I'll, pre I'll, I'll, really, I'll just copy this because it'll look the exact same. All we'll do, this will stay zero. And yeah, that's all the same. But this code won't run. And the reason for that is, um, well, Visual Studio Code is sort of spoiling it, is because of this. 
we can't compare every type as oh is this larger than this right and do all the same way that you can do with i32s or characters and actually I'll, I'll let Visual Studio spoil this one it says T mining a bound for std compare partial ord and what that is is a trait which is actually the topic of the next video so to let's wait a little bit to actually make this work but yeah this is how you would write the function of generics that's um, the syntax of it and to call it really you'll just create a list um, let's say create a list of let's create a vec we'll say one two three and then you would call we could print line not really there's not much point to print line because it won't run but you could just say largest and then pass in your list okay and yeah so I'll comment this code out and now let's talk about implement with generics okay so when I said implement I meant uh, methods for structs and so just to display it, I brought our struct point back into view. So the way that you do this, say we want to create an implement, pretty similar to how you do with functions, you'll say t u, which is the same as what we'll have here, so t u, and you can just create your function. So say we want to create a function x, which is sort of like a, a getter, we'll pass in self, um, and we'll return type t. In here, we'll just say um, self dot x. Actually, let's return a reference t. Okay, so um, that's the way to do it. That's the syntax, uh, pretty straightforward. But one thing that I want to point out that I mentioned in, back when I introduced you to structs is that we can have as many implements as we like. And I said that this would be useful in terms of generics. So call back to that. What we can do here is we can specify implements for specific types. So we can say point um, f32, f32. And in here we could just create a function, um, say m, in which we pass in self and we output we don't output anything, we'll just print line um, we'll just print line f32 and we'll oh I guess we can't really say our point can we actually let's just, let's just um, derive debug so we can actually run this code so you can see some code <laughs> for once in a while derive, we'll derive debug once again this allows us to actually display it with this formatter and yeah so this now should run um okay so if i call if i try to call p m remember p is implemented with two i32s we will get an error so let's clear this let's cargo run there um method not found in main point integer integer but now if i make this 1, 1.0, 1 1.0, and we run it, it runs just perfectly. So yeah, that's implement or methods with uh, generics. Okay, so the last topic of this video is performance with generics, but before I get into that, I just want to um, sort of, I guess, encourage you to go try things out. Um, in implements, you can still use other generics in functions, just like we use the largest one. Same syntax, you can say vw, in which you'll pass in another point, vw. And this is just uh, an example I got from the book in which they're mixing up. You're getting your, your x and the other points, y, and, and you mix up your points. But yeah, go try things out uh, and have fun with it. Okay, now let's get into performance. A concern some people have when writing code is if the methods they're using will be slower. And that's not the case with generics. Um, due to this design choice called mon monomorphization, generics code will run just as fast. Um, so just to display that and display what happens in here, 
say we create this enum called whatever. Uh, I'm just writing debug so the example is actually correct. And if we print it with an i32 and an f64, what's actually happening post compilation with monomorphization is our compiler is creating specific code for we each one of them. So it's almost as if it was defining this enum for uh, well, design as enum multiple times. And then here you'd call your whatever i32 and here you call your whatever f64. So yeah, that's what happens with generics, monomorphization. It runs just as fast. Don't have any concerns using it in your code. Um, that'll be it for today. I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.